On the 20th of March 2006, The Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion released to most of the world. As you could tell from the time of this video going up, it's just over 10 years ago. Recently this game had its 10th birthday and I decided to give it a review treatment. So let's look back at Oblivion and see if it lives up to today's standard of games. As most of you will know, Oblivion was developed by Bethesda Game Studios and published by Bethesda Softworks. It released on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and PC. It is a open world fantasy RPG based in a fictional world of Nern. It continues the Elder Scrolls series in the continent of Tamriel and has your player character explore the region within Tamriel called Cyrodiil. For this look back review, I will be looking at the vanilla versions without any DLC. In my opinion, some of the DLC is a strong competitor for a look back review on its own. I'll maybe look into that once Fallout 4's supposedly massive Far Harbor launches and we can compare. Right, back to Oblivion. So the game's story has you play as a prisoner who is within a cell in the Imperial City for an unknown crime. Luckily for you, it's the cell that the Emperor must escape through. Right, I know what you're thinking. No shit. An Elder Scrolls game with you as a prisoner? Very original. Well, as a few of you will know, it all kicks off after you finish the tutorial which is your escape through the sewers and once you get out, you are free to pretty much do whatever you want. Which is, well, one of my favourite parts of the game. A lot of games try to do this nowadays, but for me this was the first truly open world RPG that I played. So, the story follows you aiding the last heir to the throne, fighting off a Daedric Prince of Destruction from entering Tamriel and destroying it. It's got some slow points, but overall I really enjoyed it. The main story's experience was like my opinion on most Bethesda made open world RPGs main story. Not really the main aspect of the game to be honest. This is where the choice of doing what you want comes in handy. There are numerous other quest lines that you can stumble upon within the region of Cyrodiil, some of which are small and others are much bigger being very fleshed out. For example, the Dark Brotherhood questline. It is sort of one of the main side quest lines, along with other guilds such as the Mages, Fighting and Thieves Guild, having similar sized questlines. The Dark Brotherhood questline sees your character joining a group of assassins. A little ways down the road, the group experiences some internal issues. I honestly felt this story truly stood out even above the rest, and to be honest, better than most games main story or just their main content in general. It really touches on themes of building trust and then betrayal. I really felt like I got attached to some of the characters within the Dark Brotherhood, mainly Lucien Lachance who was your main link into the Brotherhood and a sort of mentor of the Assassin Arts. The other questlines are almost as strong by themselves and I overall believe them to be the main thing of the game rather than the main storyline with Martin Septon, who is the last heir. Before I talk about anything else, I have to mention a little thing called the Imperial City Arena. It's just as it sounds, an arena within the Imperial City. It's an excellent feature to have included in the game. Being able to face off against other warriors or monsters gladiator style is always fun. Although it can get repetitive at times and the story behind it is a little bland, but it's just plain simple fun. Unless you get chopped up into little pieces by your opponent. So the most recent instalment of the main Elder Scrolls series, which would be Skyrim, released in 2011 for those who don't know. Honestly, this is the best game to compare Oblivion to. Yes, there are other games from back in 2006, but personally nothing really stands out within the same style and genre of the game, like Skyrim for a comparison. The combat is a little iffy at times in Oblivion when looking back at it. Although I really enjoyed using it, and still do to an extent, it's not a super smooth flowing combat style like The Witcher 3, however it does get the job done. It's simple to use, or at least much more simple to use compared to Morrowind's. I certainly feel that Skyrim has improved upon the Oblivion combat system, feeling more like you're actually having a clash with somebody, and also having some finisher moves, which would have come in handy in Oblivion, but other than that, it's pretty solid. During my hundreds and hundreds of hours of playing the game, I have encountered a few minor issues with the combat, but overall the hitboxes and animations have acted fairly smooth or smooth enough to be enjoyable and not forcing you into an awkward feeling that you're bashing a sprite off a goblin with a stick. 
The world of the Elder Scrolls is goddamn amazing, and Oblivion isn't any different. Oh, you, you want me to say more than just that? Well, yeah, um... Obviously, you will potentially have a different opinion on Oblivion's world, but yeah, Cyrodiil was excellently crafted. It has a massive scale which can often be too much for people, but then again, games are trying for the bigger is better vibe nowadays. If you decide to do a playthrough without fast travelling, which I do recommend if you have the time for it, you will become immersed. Well, to an extent. The graphics aren't super realistic, but this is 2006. Don't expect to be playing a game like Kingdom Come Deliverance but with magic here. Anyway, you will become immersed in the world if you actually explore it like it was meant to be explored. Trust me, the swooping valleys of the overworld are a beautiful sight for their time. And when you venture into the cities and towns you will become enraptured in the merchant stands or the back street stabbings and maybe even you could venture into the sewers for another peek. At the end of the day, you as a general viewer probably want a little score from me of a sort. And I know some of you will obviously disagree with this, and I do want to hear your overall opinions of the game when looking back at it to today. But due to the amount of fun I've had over the years of this game, and the fact that it's just a generally well constructed game despite having a few minor bugs at its launch, I have to say it stays up to par and even goes beyond today's average mainstream game for me, by quite a long shot to be honest. I'm giving it a rating of 5 stars, it's very high class but not quite perfect. If you don't quite understand my rating system, well, have a peek in the description, there's more information on my rating method there. I recently saw this game really cheap online with all the DLCs, so the game of the year edition. I would certainly recommend you pick it up, you will not regret it. So that was a little review of Oblivion for its 10th anniversary that recently passed us. Why don't you have a look back at the game yourself if you haven't done so already and give me your thoughts on whether it stands up to today's gaming. Tell me all that in the comments below. Also tell me if you guys want more little reviews like this and also if you have any recommendations of games yourselves. My name is Stally111, make sure to drop a like, drop a comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And remember this is a review just for fun, like what video games are meant for. I'll see you guys on the next video, peace off.